This is the story of one of the world's finest surgeons. He is known as the great medical innovator who does all of his operations to classical music. Meet Ben Carson, the pediatric neurosurgeon known to colleagues and patients alike as the surgeon with gifted hands. He gives dying children a second chance at life and achieves where other doctors have failed or given up hope. As a brain surgeon, he routinely performs some of the most complicated and dangerous operations imaginable. But imagination is what sets Dr. Carson apart. In the field of neurosurgery, Ben Carson is an inspiration to other doctors because of his relentless effort to find new and better ways to operate. In 1986, the medical community was shocked when he successfully performed brain surgery on a baby still in the womb. But that didn't get nearly as much attention as the 1987 separation of the Binder Siamese twins who were joined at the head. Nicknamed Gentle Ben because of his calm and compassionate demeanor, he is best known for taking on surgical challenges that other physicians would not even consider. One of his specialties is children with craniofacial deformities. Dr. Carson routinely operates on patients that are considered high risk. This ghetto in Detroit, Michigan, is where Ben Carson grew up. Ben took his wife, Candy, to his old home to reminisce about his childhood. Ben's father left when he was seven. His mother, who only had a third grade education, was rarely home, having to work two and three jobs at a time to support her two sons. By age 10, Ben was a boy in trouble. As an unmotivated student with terrible grades, he was at the bottom of his class. Ben accepted his schoolmate's nickname of Class Dummy. Today, the Carsons live in this home outside of Baltimore. Ben now has three sons of his own. His mother, Sonia Carson, is the real story behind Carson's escape from poverty. She was determined to never give up on Ben and his brother, Curtis, until they reached their full potential. My sole purpose was for them to get an education so they can get a decent job because I could not find one without an education. And then I just really asked God what, uh, to show me a way that I could motivate them. And then this plan, uh, this plan came to me, let them learn the timetables. I had heard that. And then uh, I said, okay, we're gonna learn the timetables together. And so the second day came back, I said, how are you done on, on the timetables? And so Ben wanted to go outdoors and play. He said, mother, you are a mean mother. It's impossible. Can't nobody learn those timetables. Can't nobody in the world learn those timetables. I said, well, OK. You can figure out. You, you're smart. You can figure out how to learn them. And so uh, let's say that you are going to not play until you learn your timetables. And a very short time, he learned them, all the way from 2 to, through 12. With his newly found love for knowledge and a goal of becoming a doctor, Ben Carson appeared unstoppable. He won a scholarship to Yale. After graduation, he went to the University of Michigan Medical School. Finally, he became a surgeon at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. At the young age of 32, he was named their director of pediatric neurosurgery. To many of his patients, even today, Ben Carson seems too young to be a world-famous neurosurgeon. Dr. Carson is an inspiration to many, but Ben has his heroes, too. One of his greatest inspirations is Norma Claypool. Norma has adopted eight children, all of which are severely deformed. She is a single parent, and all eight live with her in Baltimore. With love and affection, she raises children that no one else wanted. And Norma is blind. There are a lot of people who have technical abilities. There are a lot of people who have knowledge, who don't necessarily have wisdom. You know, the technical skills, the knowledge, those are things that can be acquired. But I believe wisdom comes from God, and it has to be sought and asked for.